Okay, this is a very exciting day for me because today I get to look at something that I've been wanting for a long time. This is the Panoramics CLT. So we got our instruction manual. It comes with a USB charging cord and it looks like a little foam pad. We also have a bag so we can carry that thing around, prevent it from getting dirty. So we do have a shield on the front. We also have a spare just in case we ruin that one. It's cool. <laughs> that is a very nice looking helmet. So we can see this is a fairly soft plastic, which is excellent. So it's gonna be a little bit more resistant to damage. One of the coolest things about this is you can see that little nose piece in there. So what's gonna do is it's gonna allow you to set your face closer to that lens so that you get a much wider field of view. So if you're to think of this lens the same way, everything on the outside of this, you wouldn't be able to see just because it's that much further away. But if you can bring it closer to your eyes, you can actually see a lot more information. And it just has to do with how close it is to your eyes. And this will work in a very similar way because it has this cavity for your nose to go in, you can actually push this lens up closer to your eyes so you can see a lot more. And yeah, I can see everything with this. This is awesome. So the top strap is surprisingly comfortable. I think just because there's so much surface area making contact with my skull, it's, uh, it really does a good job of distributing the weight. And it's not really that heavy. I was surprised by picking up the box. I was even wondering if there was anything inside of it. But yeah, this is a very cool way of designing a helmet. And if you think about a regular lens, it's about this big. This is actually wider than this. Like even just from like this far away, crushing my nose, I can still see more with this than I can with this. And as an added bonus, because my nose is going to be in this little cavity, it's going to be directing all of the airflow down and away from this lens. So I don't have to worry about it fogging up. So this is the correct way to design a welding helmet. Like this is the only way that I want to do it from this point forward. Now everybody's nose is going to be a little bit different, so it might not be perfect for you, but I got a pretty big schnoz and mine fits in here no problem. This does have a button for the grind function, so it's right there. So if you want to change it to grind, you just hit that. You got a ton of adjustability on here, as well as snaps on the top and a dial on the back. And I do like that this is ratcheting forward and then not ratcheting and loosen it up. And lots of ventilation all the way throughout. Now for me, the default setting, it was perfectly fine. Like it lined up with my eyes, no problem. But if you need this to come down a little bit so that your eyes actually line up with the window, you just rotate that and you can see it kind of dials that in. And the instructions say this is a nose protection pad. So if that plastic is making contact with your nose, you can put this in there to make it a little softer. So on the inside, you can see a switch right here. So if I bring that down, that is an auto. And then you can use this dial to fine tune it. If we want to do it in manual, we just flip that up and then we can use this to set the exact shade that we want. Over here, we got the delay. So if we know we're going to be doing a lot of skipping, so we're going to be flashing on then off, then on and then off. And we just want it to stay dark so we don't have to keep on adjusting our eyes we can increase that delay and it's important to know this is from light to dark this is not from dark to light so if you increase this or decrease this it's not going to make any effect whatsoever on this thing flashing you going from light to dark is still going to be instant no matter where you put that dial and then this last dial is the sensitivity which is the most important reason why i got this lens because you probably already know if you've been looking at this thing that this has a shade of two whenever you're looking through it whenever it's not shaded so if you're working in a very dark environment that is going to be incredibly useful because you're still going to be able to see what's going on through that lens Right? Look at that. It's kind of amazing, right? Even in a very dark environment. Now I have the exact opposite problem. My environment is so bright that welding helmets have a hard time deciding whether or not it should actually turn the shade on or off. What I mean by that is I actually have to set the sensitivity very low so that it doesn't automatically turn on just because of the ambient lighting in the room. Now that works great for stick and MIG because that's very bright processes, but for TIG, that's a problem. Because TIG is very bright, I have to set the sensitivity up, but then it's just gonna automatically be turning the shade on even when I'm not TIG welding. So what I end up having to do is lift the held up, get myself set up, and then crack my neck to drop the helmet so that I can start welding. Now I don't want to do that anymore. I'm looking for a helmet that I can look through, I can get set up, and then I can just start welding and it will automatically adjust the shade appropriately. So I'm hoping that this is going to be the correct helmet for that. But that is what I'm going to be testing with this helmet. Now I do have to say I really like the fact that you can actually charge this thing externally. For most welding helmets, they tell you, yeah, I just put it out in the sun if it's not charged enough. Well, I just don't want to deal with that anymore. I want something that I can charge on my terms. You can see I got it plugged in right there and it's got a little rubber protector on there. Block that port to make sure nothing gets in when you're not charging it. So I'm going to set that guy up to charge. And it says to give it 24 hours the first time that you're going to use it. All right, so for the first test, I've got the sensitivity about halfway up. Basically, it's pointing directly to the left. I've got the amps at 32 amps, so this should be a pretty dark arc, if anything. So at the moment, I can see no problem. Let's see what we get. Yep. That works. Perfect. No flash at all. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to turn the amps up so I can actually get some welding. Let's go to 60. I'm so used to having to flip it at the very end. Thank you. <laughs> that was a bit too hot for this metal. Let's 
turn that down some more. 45 amps. It is amazing how much you can see. All right. I'm a believer. I'm going to attempt to see if I can get a direct through the glass look. Not sure how else it's going to turn out, but we'll see if we can make that work. Yeah, that is just incredible. I'm going to get a clear cup just so you can see a little better. Up to you guys because I want this thing back. This helmet is so nice. Can't fix it that well, but golly, that is an awesome helmet. So, yeah, that is for sure my TIG welding helmet. I think it's their attention is if I put this on grind mode, you see right there there is a little blue light flashing. You can actually see that reflected in the front lens. So you know if this thing is in grind mode. So if you see that blue flashing light, you know that you should not be welding with this. So that is cool. It's like a heads-up display right there in the helmet. 